Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. T22 Land Rover P530. First edition with launch control. Dynamic launch activated. Ah. <laughs> a lot of bouncing. Yeah, there's a lot of car to move. Horsepower and torque. 523 horsepower, 553 pound feet of torque from a twin turbo 4.4 liter V8. What kind of V8 is it? It's straight from BMW from the X7 M50i. And it's got BMW logos on the engine? Yes. But, uh, but that's fine. First of all, looks, dude, look, this looks wild. Well, like hang on, let me, let me just explain that. It does look wild. Quickly, uh, editor, show the looks. The reason why this has this engine is because they're phasing out the five liter supercharged V8 because of emission stuff. So rather than developing their own V8 engine because they're going to EVs, they just bought this from BMW. That's fair. Back to the looks. Man, this looks so cool. We got this cool gold matte paint. Uh, yeah, it looks like rose gold matte. Like this is one of my favorite matte paints I've ever seen. The rear end, the rear three quarter, that looks like future concept car, something you'd see out of a future TV show that's in real life. Yeah, because you don't even see the tail lights until they're illuminated. The back end looks crazy cool. The body lines, it's, it's like smooth, comes around. We got the door handles that are inside the car. They're flush, like man. I mean, some of them are flush sometimes, Yuri. I mean, one of the door handles stopped working. It's a it's a Jaguar Land Rover car, like it's, it's expected. Yeah, our rear right passenger door has completely stopped working. We have to open it from the inside already. Not completely stopped working. Like you can roll the window up and down from that seat. But, but you can't I can't from this seat right now, which I should be able to. Okay, so I can roll that one down. Whatever, whatever. Okay, let's get to more good stuff. The looks again. I like how the top is all black and everything. Yeah, this is a gorgeous looking refresh. The front end looks pretty good. Uh, that's the least refreshed part, I would say. Yeah, but then it's like really big and open at the bottom, but it still looks really, 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 really nice. Yeah. I like uh, what they did with the exhaust tips too, how they just like had them pointing down and like flat kind of thing there. Like that bottom black part looks wicked. They hid them in the right way possible without trying to accentuate them. And then these 23 inch wheels look really good in black as well. They, they killed it on this design. And then you can like lower it, raise it nice, like a good amount of lowering. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. And this being the top tier biggest Range Rover you can buy, it's packed with technology. One of my favorite technologies that's packed into this is the 360 cameras. Normally you don't really hear me talking about that, but that's because I can press this camera button right now while I'm driving and check this out. We have our cameras while we're driving. It says not recommended above 40, but check this out. It gets even crazier. We can actually oh my God. drive in third person mode at whatever speed we want and change the angles while we're driving, which again is not recommended, but look how easily I'm doing can this. I, can I film you do that through Cliche Corner? Do it. This is going to be the first Cliche Corner third person through a camera view ever. Oh okay, yeah, I got it. Okay, I'm going to vary the, the modes for you. All right, here we go, here we go. You also have to talk about handling through Cliche while you do it. Okay, so it's got a lot of body roll, uh, quite a bit, because we're on air suspension while I'm also trying to change these camera modes. And the traction control definitely is quite intrusive as expected to be in such a large vehicle like this. But how cool is this? That's, that is wild that they let you do that. But I guess that's rich people stuff. But yeah, like no other rich people stuff, like you can't do this in a Maybach, you can't do this in a BMW Alpina XB7. Special rich people stuff. Yeah, so I mean, we could like leave this on, but this is actually very distracting. Yeah, that, that's very cool. And yeah, handling wise through Cliche, when I went through earlier, it was like, it kind of bogged you down. And then when you floored it, you had so much power coming out. I was like, whoa. Yeah, so uh, we really like the BMW powertrain and this is a very good BMW powertrain. It's got that ZF eight-speed auto. It shifts really quickly. It's nice and smooth here. It's not the fastest shifting when you use manual. So we do have nice paddles to control that. Downshift, downshift, and a little slow. A little bit slow, but still good because it's smooth. I feel, I feel good about this. And, and a really good amount of torque because yeah. BMW engine, like I think this, BMW engine has made this Land Rover more refined. Yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking that. I'm like, okay, I, I trust the BMW engine, so this, this is nice. Yeah, and there is a base engine below this, which is still a uh, Land Rover, Range Rover engine. The next thing I'd love to bring up is when you were ripping it, it is so quiet in here. Let's, let's do silent mode. Okay, let me just get into the proper gear. It is dead quiet in here. 
like I can't hear like wind going off or anything. It's like so, so, so quiet. And I'm in dynamic mode uh, because that also changes your gauge cluster. The gauges have all been updated. Everything looks crystal clear. It's very high res. I really like what they did with this. But because this is the first edition, it's based on the autobiography. So this is more expensive than the autobiography, which gives you a ton of features in the back, like motorized cup holders. Okay, Jacob pointed out to me that if the armrest was up and you get in the car, it might take you up to like 30 seconds before you can put your cup in a cup holder, which I think is pretty ballin'. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> complaining about your motorized armrest and cup holder seems to be a luxurious thing to do for rich people, probably. It's the, my, the first time I've seen a motorized armrest that goes down, and it's pretty cool. You got the tablet there, you got your Coke mirror in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can drink uh, Coke coca-cola oh, yeah, but like for real like having a little portable mirror like that for like checking your face and doing makeup and stuff is better than like the ones that flip out from the top because we gotta like lean forward a whole bunch like nah people yeah. just this just saves people from like pulling a mirror out of your purse and then you have a whole large moonroof because of that because you don't have to have that extra little mirror coming out of the thing and then you have rear screens back there which basically just uh, have hdmi ports and that's kind of really it i'm still Rear entertainments for cars are still not where I think they should be, where they should just be a yeah. literally what you get on an airplane. But we do have automatic peasant blockers back there, and I can control it, at least this rear left one. Which yeah, I, can, I can make this one see. go up if I reach over. Yeah, uh, I should be able to from my side, but I can't because it's can't. broken right now. There, I put it up. Okay, so motorized pe peasant blockers, as long as you're back there. Oh, Prowler. Prowler, that's sick, I drive that Prowler. I should have showed it on the 360. Um, so the back seats are really impressive, however, they're not that large. So the rear right one is the one you want to be in, but because this is, is it the, though? well, it is still, this is the short wheelbase. There is a long wheelbase. I think you need the long wheelbase if you're taller than either of us. At five foot eight, I assume I'll be able to stretch out in the back of these cars and Jacob will have a hard time. And I'm always nope. like, it's cause you're tall. Nobody cares about tall people. Not in this Get car. Get a longer car, you dumb idiot. Yeah, but even here. me, I'm like stuck. And then you pointed out something funny that uh, the, the bottom foot part goes at a different rate, so your feet kind of get like clamped. You need to <laughs> move your feet correctly. Yeah, I think what they should have done is do the thigh part first, or, or whatever, the calf part first, and then the part for your feet. But currently it's the feet part, and then the calf part. So your feet kind of get crushed if you don't move them out of the way. So yeah. anyways, it's not that comfortable for me unless I stow the feet just, part. Just sit normal back there kind of, but yeah. it's still comfortable if, if you're fully reclined as long as that feet part is stowed and nobody's sitting here. And if you get the extended, you can have a three row, right? Yes, you, so you can finally get this in a three row. And then there's also an even more luxurious back seat with a center console that's different than this one that doesn't go up and down, but still has motorized cup holders. Motorized cup holders, That's a, does it fit a small cup? Uh, yeah, it does actually. And the front also fits a small cup. Yeah, pass. Pass, whether, whether it fitted or not, it was a gimmick pass for uh, electronic cup holders. Yes, full gimmick pass. Who knows how long that'll work considering the door is already uh, half broken. <laughs> it's not our fault. No, it's definitely not our fault. Uh, speaking of something else that may or may not be half broken or just the way that it's uh, been designed, this, we, well, we have two glove boxes. Glove boxes. Uh, if you have a lot of gloves, your bottom glove box pops down, your top one doesn't. You okay. unlock it. Okay, so, but okay, the bottom one is the gravity it drops down and then you put it up and then the top one I pull down but it the gra it's got a spring in it to pull it closed. Valid points. However, in a car with a motorized rear cup holder and armrest. Yeah, I feel like it should be motorized or something. Thank you. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on there. But honestly, those weird things aside, this is such a nice car to drive. One of the nicest cars, especially in this class that I think we've driven. Like the Maybach GLS is comparable to this. Alpina XB7 comparable to this. This feels very similar but different in a nice way. Like the materials almost feel nicer here. And this is our first Range Rover, right? Full, uh, first full size Range Rover. We've yeah. only done the sport before. I've, I've been a little confused by the whole uh, setup of everything. So for me, I'm like, wow, this is... Yeah. I, I didn't really realize what this could be. So the full size Range Rover is like an X7. The sport is like an X5. And then the Velar is like kind of below that. And then there's whatever else they have. Evoke convertible. Yes, that would be like an X3. Was that, that was an Evoke convertible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Evoke convertible versus Murano. Review of the year. 
and this is all-wheel drive. It does have plenty of power from that BMW powertrain. Everything, like I said, is smooth. The suspension is amazing, being air suspension, but let's get you into the driver's seat to experience this all-wheel drive launching beast. And then do you want to sit behind me or in the front seat? I kind of want to sit in the front. Right, right. <laughs> so to start things off, we have really good rear wheel steering, which makes U-turns very, very pleasant. It shortens the wheelbase significantly. And the next thing that I noticed and remembered when I got into the driver's seat is that every like door jam under the hood everything is painted with this awesome paint there's no shortcuts there's no paint missing yeah it's, I, I, that's one of the most impressive things ever right yeah i mean at this price point i would expect it but at the same time i it feels like we've seen corners cut before on other cars but not in, like not nothing on this paint no like unreal and getting inside i love all this light material i like the was this cream the, yeah and i love this like Light. Very very light wood. Beach wood. I love Is that. Is that beach wood? We were calling it beach wood? I don't know, man. Yeah. Gray wood. And you know what? Instead of piano black, we got like a matte uh, metal material. Yes. And we do have a little bit of gloss black like on the uh, the door handles and stuff, but not much. Or not door handles, the uh, whatever. Window things. Switch gear. Thank you. It's acceptable. Then we got some chrome. Like a really good mix of materials. I really like it's it. Super high quality. Everything feels really nice. Okay. Steering wheel. You got these capacitive buttons and stuff like well, whatever. This is an expensive car. I expect it. I know rich people like that kind of stuff. And part of those capacitive buttons, this has lane keep, and it does work really well on the highway, not so much on uh, side roads like this. Okay. Uh, I'm a little bit shorter. Sometimes I have trouble getting my elbows onto the steering wheel. See? Elbows onto the armrest while touching the steering wheel. But I have these other armrests that make it so I can have my elbows on the armrest. Now, while I do like those, uh, if you actually just leave it down, it gets in the way of buckling your seatbelt, so I've just moved them out of the way. Yeah, yeah, but for, if you can't get your elbows here, that's yeah. a great design. It is. Shifter's cool too, kind of weird, but I like it. The texture on it's kind of interesting too. Drive mode dial is pretty straightforward for uh, JLR stuff. Yeah, we got a ton of drive modes, like an unbelievable amount of drive modes. Yeah. Don't take this off-roading. It's too nice. It is please, way too nice. Please. Oh, back to the looks. I just remembered it's got that like weird U thing uh, at the front of the driver door. Uh, yeah, that's been a, a full-size Range Rover staple for uh, the longest time. I like that accent a lot. It is cool. Like a lot, a lot. Okay, back inside. Our climate control. We have those gimmicky knobs that you can twist or push and twist or pull and twist, and they do different things. And I think this is like the best iteration of that style of things. And I totally agree because it, we don't have that secondary full screen like we did in the Velar and other stuff. Yeah. So this is a really good way oh, to do I'm, it. Oh, I'm in cliche corner. Let me, let me rip Okay, it. okay. I forgot. Yeah, this car does rip other than uh, the traction. Climb, yeah, completely killed it. <laughs> yeah. And then once you get back on it, it'll like just rocket you into the next thing. And you're yeah. like, Whoa. <laughs> a little bit unpredictable. And funny thing you should notice that I didn't point out while I was driving. Um, when you floor it, look in your rearview mirror and look how your background disappears. You're only going to be able to see the road because the car pitches so much forward and back. I see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but I can flick it and then I get this camera here and there's two antennas there, which looks weird from far away. It looks like it could be like a cop car with a lot of antennas and stuff. But now try that with digital and do the same thing. It still does it. Oh, last. Well, because you're on a hill. Okay, okay. <laughs> There, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool. The air suspension is so soft that the front end is just like this when you're driving. So we already talked about the back seats, but we didn't talk about the trunk. The trunk is really cool. It's got that classic Land Rover split fold, but the way they did it looks really good because you can't really tell it's a split fold until you open it. The, me the mechanics of it is very impressive. Yeah, and then they added like a... Um, a carpet material? Yeah, well, they have a bench seat. So you fold up this little thing, which can also be used as a grocery divider, but they added these like pads that you have to clip on so you can sit there comfortably while drinking your glass of wine while watching your dog hunt dog ducks or whatever is happening. I don't know what people do in these cars. I think it retrieves the ducks. Yeah, yeah. You but, hunt the ducks. Okay, I'm gonna mean, go maybe back. you could train it to do I'm going to give it a good one through Cliche Corner now. Okay. Oh, yeah. Body roll like, central. It is fast, but it is moving a lot up top. I but think, this is faster than an Escalade through here. The oh, v. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but I feel like this is the definition of like disconnected yes. driving. But you can go fast, but you're just like wrestling computers doing weird things. Yeah, but it's like disconnected in a good way if you don't want to go fast because it's, it's so smooth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's smooth, quiet, and like, like it's like driving that Bose car probably with the bounce. <laughs> I, I'm just obsessed with that. I know you are. I just want a, I just want a car that can jump over speed bumps. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's check these visors, which are like leather lined. Okay, here. We, whoa, 
Uh, three, two, one. Fe yes. Oh, pass and a double visor. Oh. Yes, it's been a while. Car of the year. I thought it was going to fail because I saw the double visor. I saw the arrow right away when you said, oh. oh. Man, here we go. What a car. And this two-tone interior also looks really nice, too. Dude, yeah, yeah. our roof, ceiling, whatever. You, I keep forgetting what this is called. Headliner? Headliner is leather. It's that nice. is ballin'. Hey, we also have a head-up display. We do. But I'm just using this. The gauge cluster is actually so fantastic. It is. No issues. Compared to, like, previous uh, Land Rovers and Jaguars, like, this is... Yeah, the dynamic gauge is good, and then if you put it into, like, Eco or any of the other gauges, it makes it a little bit simpler. Did you talk about CarPlay and Android Auto already? I didn't. So it does have it. It's got both. And I believe they're only wireless... Because I, I tried connecting with my cable and it wouldn't let me. It's a big, big high-res screen. Yeah, it looks impressive. Yeah, I think I'd be able to touch most of it. Yeah. The top it, right corner would be a little far for me. It looks really impressive, but the only way I found to disconnect CarPlay was to turn off my Bluetooth, turn off my Wi-Fi, and then delete my device. You could, through add a device. Yes. <laughs> yeah, a little tricky. And then you can also control a bunch of things through this infotainment, like your seats. So we do have front massages, which are really good. Mm, this is very good. I really like that. And then we have a ton of other options just like we do on every new JLR product. Seats are easy to customize and like you get a nice position easily, much better than those uh, Lincoln seats that we just... Yeah, the perfect position which never actually works. Yeah. And then we have uh, Sirius XM satellite radio. It does rewind. Yeah, the sound system in this is amazing. It is uh, Meridian Signature, which is a step above the regular Meridian. If you get a Land Rover, make sure you have Sirius XM. If you need three free months to try it, hit up SiriusXM.ca or .com slash the straight pipes. The link down below do not let your Sirius XM expire in a Land Rover <laughs> yes so with all of that out of the way I think it's time we get to the price so the Land Rover itself starts at $135,450 Canadian and this one that we're driving is $199,070 dude this looks like a gold bar driving down the road it does uh, that paint is a $9,400 option and it's the most expensive option that we have on this car <laughs> that is so worth it this it, paint it is, is actually so incredibly impressive at all times I know I, I normally wouldn't like a color like this but I love it on this so I think this is a really impressive redesign for this new generation. I think they did a really good job. A couple little things that are still JLR things with reliability, so who knows where that's going. But I do really like this SUV, assuming everything works. Yeah, this is sweet. I, I like this. I, I'm excited to see these on the road. I don't know if I'm going to see any in this amazing color, but hopefully I do. Yeah, I'm def we're definitely going to see more of these than we will like Mybox and Alpina XB7s. You know how many uh, Mybox I've seen on the road since we did our review? One. Zero. You know how many Alpinas? One. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember that as well. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. And before we go, make sure you hit up Continental Tire. Use the link below to find what your Continental recommended tire is. ContinentalTire.com slash the Thanks, guys. Continental Tires. Next week at whatever video that is. <laughs>